All right, welcome out to another episode of Drake's Dungeon. Uh, joining me for this episode is going to be uh, one of our longtime engineers. And I say long time because I've been here for a long time, and he's been here even longer than me. So joining us in a little bit is going to be uh, Nick Sai. But before we get into that, just want to make sure uh, you guys are aware, if it's been a while since you checked in with the game, uh, the Twin Blade is now available, and it is pretty darn cool. Um, I've been using it mostly with, mixed in with my gunships. The The combination of the two has actually been surprisingly beautiful. So if you haven't had a chance to go pick that up, uh, that is now available uh, in the gear store. So go and uh, pick up your Twin Blade. As well as the Allen Hero Unit, the Excavator Hero, has just recently become available in the most recent Heroic Showdown. Um, so both two awesome units that I highly recommend uh, you go out and get your hands on if you haven't already. All right. So as I mentioned, the person joining me today is Nick Sai. He is an engineer that has been with the company for about nine years now, I think. Uh, which yep. I'm nine I'm years in a couple of weeks. Nine years in a couple of weeks. I am I'm pushing seven years, and <laughs> and I'm considered ancient here. So you're like. Uh, mythic ancient when it comes to Kixai, but you've worked on numerous games, but you've been on War Commander for about seven years now, is that correct? I I believe I started on War Commander in about 2012. Okay, so, yeah. About eight, almost years. eight years. All right, so you've been on this game for a long time, so you you know it pretty in and out, and right now you're working on, you're basically one of the, the engineers that's tasked with working on the HTML5 conversion. For for players that don't know, um, Flash is no longer going to be basically a thing at the end of the year. It's, it's going away. And we're converting the game to HTML5 so we can continue building the game for years and years to come. And um, this means that, you know, it takes a lot of people to make that happen. And of course, this this project has been tasked to one of our best engineers, most skilled engineers, who's been with this game for <laughs> eight years now, roughly. Uh, so so Nick Sai, you're you're working on this. Uh, let me just ask a very loaded question and say, how's it going? <laughs> oh, it's 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 going. All right. Um, yeah, so I've I've been I've been at it for quite a while now. We've been working on um, some of the prep work for the port, uh, and also the porting efforts themselves have been going, uh, kind of alongside each other. So what I've been doing for the past few months, um, we have, uh, years ago when we created the, um, synced battles, we wrote it in such a way that the battle simulation, which we call, uh, the client side battle simulation is called AI box. Um, so that battle simulation was written in C++. Uh, on the server side, that gets compiled as a regular C++ object, which means it's, you know, pretty pretty standard, um, you know, compilation process. But for the client, we cross-compile that C++ to ActionScript bytecode using um, what was, at the original time we set it up, a, an alpha version of what later became CrossBridge. So that this is Adobe's um, suite of... Uh, tools to allow you to write code in one language and compile it to another, basically. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, it was called, uh, it was, I believe it was Alchemy, and it became Flask, and then CrossBridge. So it's it's been around for a while, uh, but Adobe stopped supporting it a while back. This became kind of a, a complication in our porting efforts, because there is really no way to port C++ cross-compiled to ActionScript to HTML5 in any proper way. Um, so some of the first steps of doing our conversion to HTML5 meant that we had to get rid of this battle simulation on the client or completely rewrite it from scratch. Uh, what we've ended up doing is essentially ripping it out entirely. What's going to be happening from now on is the battle simulation is going to be done entirely on the server. So we can continue developing that in C++. Um, but we've gone to a more typical client server model. So basically the server is going to do everything. It's gonna say, here's how the unit moves, here's where the projectiles fire, that sort of thing. And then it's just going to tell the client, here's where the unit is, here's where the projectile is, 
And it's the client isn't really going to be simulating anything. It's just going to be interpolating positions, essentially, and then displaying whatever the server tells it. That way, it's uh, the, the, the remaining client side code is pure AS3, which, you know, which is action script three, um, you know, which is the, the underlying code for flash. That's going to make it a lot easier for, for the porting efforts to move forward. Mm-hmm. Now, I said earlier, the porting efforts are going on alongside, um, in tandem with the uh, removal of AI box. Um, the way that we're accomplishing this is the, the AI box removal is a branch off of the mainline code. Uh, so it's, it's a modified version of what is currently existing on live. And, you know, I periodically pull the latest code from live and put it into my branch. The port to HTML5 is then branched from this branch. So whenever I update things from live, the the guys that are currently working on the HTML5 port then update their code from what I have. Uh, So it's kind of a multi-step process. Um, The reason we're doing it that way is because we didn't want to wait until the removal of the simulation was done before we started doing the port. We didn't want to take a chance at it falling behind. Uh, so, you know, we got started on it as soon as we possibly could. So that effort has actually been going on for a while now alongside, you know, for the past few months, alongside the, the removal of AI box has been the porting to HTML5 and it's actually looking fantastic. I've, I've looked at some of the stuff that, uh, the guys that have been working specifically on the porting effort, they've been sharing some videos of, of their updates and it's looking fantastic. Um, so I'm really excited about it. Um, but, uh, in the meantime, I'm actually very close to wrapping up the removal of AI box, which means pretty soon we should be able to, I, I'd say probably within a month or so, hopefully have that live and, and everybody will get to see that progress. There will be some minor changes because without a client side simulation, for example, when you're in your own base, moving units around, they're not going to move quite the same. You know, there, there'll be some differences, but overall it'll mean that, you know, it, it allows us to continue forward and um, personally, I think it, it feels smoother as well. Uh, when you're running battles, um, things go smooth. I've heard some feedback from, from our QA team saying the same thing. Um, it loads a bit quicker because now we don't have to uh, do the initial setup phase for AI box. Turns out that was actually a, a pretty hefty load as well. So yeah, some things have changed, um, but overall it's gonna be the same game. Um, all the guts of it are still the same as what you're used to. It, it, it should play pretty much identical to what what it was before. Now, once this is done, I'm going to be rolling into the the porting efforts with the other guys that have already been working on it. And over the next few months, we're going going to be uh, doing a full conversion. That is also a multi-step process. Uh, Rewriting a game like ours, which has, I believe, actually millions of lines of code. I, I, I haven't counted recently, but I think we have more than a million lines of code at least. (laughs) Um, so doing that porting effort obviously is a pretty gargantuan task. So I just have a mental image of you going through each line one by one and going like, you know, one, two, three, and then (laughs) like, yeah. Yeah. And then sneezing and then realizing like, Oh no, what was I on? Oh, I got to start to zero. (laughs) Yeah. We actually, we actually have at times, and it's, it's been a few years since we, we did this, but we actually had visualization tools, which showed, uh, where the bulk of the code was, and it did some analysis on the on the repository. And I believe at that point there was something like 1.2 million lines of code, I think. And that's you know it's been years, so there's been more added since. Uh, yeah, so it's 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 a pretty gargantuan task, and doing it manually, 100% manually, would be impossible given the timeline and manpower available. We would need hundreds of engineers to do that you know, in this timeline. So what we've done is we actually have um, some tools, you know, we we took some existing tools, uh, you know, fortunately there was some open source stuff um, that we've then modified to fit our needs, basically that takes action script code and converts it into a language called Hacks. Hacks is another language that is meant to be written once and deployed to various other languages. Uh, One of the languages it can deploy to is HTML5. So what this gives us is it gives us something we can convert once and deploy. You know, it, it, it could possibly be used in other ways in the future. But right now we're going to be using it for the HTML5 port. 
So basically the tools that we have and we have modified to improve the translation, but it does it automatically translates ActionScript code to HTML5. It's not going to be a perfect translation. It doesn't compile on its own. So basically we run the tool, it gives us sort of a, a basis. And then um, the guys that are currently actively working on it, then go through that code, fix up the things that don't translate properly. You know, then they then they test it. They see, okay, how does it work differently from live? All right, obviously, you know, the sprites aren't working or, you know, the projectiles aren't firing or whatever, right? And then they fix that. Um, and so that, you know, has been going on for the past few months. And like I said, it's, it's getting, uh, it's looking really good and they're making great progress on it. Um, and I'm, I can't wait to roll into that effort as well. Yeah. So ma- let me make sure I'm understanding everything because I'm an English major and <laughs> communication major. So a lot of what you said sounded like made up sci-fi terms. So I'm going to do my best <laughs> to try to make sure I understand this. So right now you're working on AI box. AI box is basically the middleman that helps talk to Flash. So we're talking about eliminating the middleman, right? Yes. And then once that's done, you're going to be working with the team that's already working on the HTML5 conversion. And and you're going to basically be taking the changes that you've made to the game without AI box and helping fold those in to that new uh, that new language that, that's going to basically turn it into HTML5. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. That's, I'm actually, just honestly, <laughs> I'm kind of shocked that I was able to sum up that really well. I am impressed. I am impressed. You, you did a Thank great you. job of explaining it. Yeah. It's, it's basically we're, we're removing a large chunk of the game. Well, not removing a large chunk of the game, but a large chunk of the code uh, and refactoring the game so that it can then be converted properly. Um, okay. And so, you know, that will all be completed before Flash gets shut down. Um, so, you know, by sometime this fall, we should be good to go and that will be, uh, available to players. Yeah. You know, I know, I know a lot of people uh, every week, I, I kid you not, I get questions on when's the specific date that HTML5 is happening. And, and sadly, cause you were saying it's such a gargantuan task that it's nearly impossible to say it's going to happen on June, whatever, you know, uh, but yeah, what we're shooting for right now is to have this either very late summer or sometime in the fall, definitely before winter is was when we're looking to make sure that this is at least in a, in an active beta form for players to actually get in there, play it and, and help us identify bugs that we can fix and, and improve it moving forward. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's um, because of the difficulty of the task and the the you know the large number of unknowns. It is near impossible to get any sort of an accurate estimate. But um, I got to say, some of the estimates that, that the guys that are actively on the port have given, uh, they've nailed it. They've been on time or ahead of schedule. Um, we've got well, some really smart guys working on it. They're they're fantastic and they're doing it, a great job. And luckily, it was a lot of the same people that worked on the port for Battle Pirates. So they have a lot of experience already working on converting a, a game that is similar to War Commander uh, to HTML5. So I, I do think that this process is going to go a bit smoother than it did with, with Battle Pirates, just because we have people that have a bit more experience on doing this now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they've they've been taking the lessons that they learned on the on the Battle Pirates port, and um, I wish I had the exact metrics, but they've been um, making progress months ahead of of how they were on Battle Pirates. It's um, they've uh, sped up the process significantly. Um, you know, when I said that we're using this tool, that the, the automatic conversion tool, they've they've made changes to the tool itself. Uh, in order to speed up and you know and improve the automatic conversion, which is saving them time in the end, you know, on on, on the manual efforts of of making things work the way that they're intended to be. Excellent. Well, uh, Nick, I, I appreciate so much giving this update. I know the community is going to appreciate it because uh, this is the type of stuff that they're really looking forward to. Um, I know that you are hard at work on uh, on doing this, so I, I'm going to let you get back to work. Again, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank uh, you for having me. Ab- absolutely. We'll have you on probably again soon once we get closer to the process completing so uh, we can get uh, folks kind of fired up for the beta and stuff like that. Does that sound good to you? That sounds wonderful. All right. Um, well, uh, once again, thank you, Nick Sai, and everybody out there playing War Commander. Uh, thank you so much. 
Uh, I know that we're uh, all in this globe dealing with uh, a lot of interesting times right now. So um, uh, we're just happy that you're spending that time with us. And uh, we will talk to you next month with another episode of Drake's Dungeon. All right, take it easy. Bye.